six race that Michael has led this year and all but one lap that one occurring at Cleveland have been on ovals Michael knows his ovals those making good moves well there's one of the guys right there Allinger Jr. 10th to 6 Cristiano Damata 16th to 12 now Michael picks the pace up and look at it he just walked away from the field when he picked up the throttle and Montoya now makes a move on Pappas Montoya working for that championship wants to get at the front of the field wants to get away from Frank Keaty. Montoya to second Pappas now with Vassar working on him onto the back stretch and remember Fontana is all about the draft with the Hanford device. It's like coming up behind a semi at 90 miles an hour and just being pulled right into the back of it. Oh! Oh, an enormous crash. Oh, my God. A terrible crash. Yellow comes out again. Greg Moore did not qualify on Saturday because he was injured Saturday morning when his scooter was struck by a vehicle. Now Moore suffered a broken finger on his right hand. Then he took a few laps in a special session late in the day on Saturday, and it was determined he will try and race. Gary? On the way to morning practice this morning, and uh, just come out of my coach on the way up, and I was on my motor scooter, and I was going along probably 10 or 12 miles an hour or something like that, and someone was coming at me in a, in a, in a pickup truck, and I guess she decided to turn into a parking spot where I was, was uh, occupying at the time, and she hit the hit the bike, and, and I went down. And uh, unfortunately, when I, I didn't want to hit my head, so I put my hand out on the ground, and I I've broken a bone inside my hand, one of the, the fourth metal carpal. Greg Moore was back in the transporter, and uh, the car and the crew have been out here working, and he's getting ready to go. He's just been checked out by the medical folks. His team has fashioned a small carbon fiber brace that will fit right around this part. The fracture is down here at the base of that metacarpal. And this will basically allow him to grip the wheel with his thumb and the forefinger and take the pressure off these three fingers. Then they've built up on the wheel here a little stop. So you can see how he'll grab the wheel. And as he turns on the oval to the left, he'll be able to push with no pressure, hopefully, here. The problem, he says, is when he downshifts, when he has to come into the pits, there is discomfort. But what they may do is just bring him into the pits in sixth gear. Then while the car is being serviced, he can go through the gears and get down and get ready to launch one more time. Going to be a long, painful day for Greg Moore, but he's smiling. He's excited. He says there's a million dollars on the line, and he wants to be a challenger for it. Richie Hearn over on the back side of this track and Hearn catches the wall hard. Yellow comes out for the first time today. Look at the cockpit. Richie Hearn is okay. That steering wheel coming off the column and being tossed out of the car. That's the signal that they look for. Here's the replay, Parker. Coming off the second corner, you can see the back end step out. Richie stand, looks like he stands on the throttle to try to get it to rotate, but he doesn't have enough racetrack and makes heavy contact with the retaining wall. Huge, huge impact. So the yellow comes out. Michael Andretti will lead the field. The kart safety team already there. And they're going to leave Richie in the car for a moment until they can talk with him, make sure he, in fact, is okay. Here's Max Pappas in second place and when this all comes out the pace car moves once Pappas that second car on your screen he apparently didn't anticipate the pace car there didn't slow down quite enough and darted in between Michael and Gail Truis the uh, SCCA Pro GT rally champion who is driving the pace car today Wow, that was close. And the problem here is, is if you have your visor tape down, which you have to do because the sun becomes such a problem later on in the race, it's difficult to see up and around the banking. You can only see a few car lengths in front of you. Here's it, Richie Hearn's problem, actually well off of two before he got in trouble. That's very surprising. These cars are always set up with a lot of understeer initially because the cars will always go to oversteer as they burn fuel and wear down the rear tires. Very strange to see a car come off the corner that late and still turn around. Well, on the other hand, Parker, though, turbulence 
on these kind of tracks, just like in the uh, Michigan 500, can be a very big problem. Well, it can be, and the problem is, with the introduction of the Hanford device and the tunnel blockers two years ago, they have half the downforce that they had in 1997. There's the onboard from Richie. Everything looks normal here. Starts to pick up the throttle coming off the corner. And I think you're absolutely right there, Paul. I think he just started to pick up the uh, turbulence of the car in front of him as he let the car back out towards the outside. Looks like he may have pinched off the exit just a little bit, and that's all it took to turn the car around. Now Michael picks the pace up. And look at it, he just walked away from the field when he picked up the throttle, and Montoya now makes a move on Pappas. Montoya working for that championship. Wants to get at the front of the field. Wants to get away from Franchitti. Montoya to second. Pappas now with Vassar working on him. Onto the back stretch. And remember, Fontana is all about the draft with the Hanford device. It's like coming up behind a semi at 90 miles an hour and just being pulled right into the back of it. Oh! Oh, oh an enormous crash. Oh, my God. A terrible crash. Yellow comes out again. We're going to hold on identifying this car because there are two cars like it in the field. We want to assure ourselves they now report it is Greg Moore. And there's his teammate, Patrick Carpentier. Greg Moore was hit on his motor scooter in the paddock yesterday morning by a car. A lot of scrapes, a lot of bruises, broke some bones in his right hand. They built up a, a whole system out of carbon fiber so that he could drive. He ran a practice drive late yesterday after the qualifying. They cleared him to start in the back. And now this horrendous crash. We wait for word from part officials what the story is at the crash site. Yellow flag came out, 10 laps complete. Greg was talking to me uh, right after the morning warm-up session, and he said they'd gone to the, used a, a needle with some medicine in it, injected it right down to the bone to help reduce any sensation of pain that he may have. And he showed me his hand, a lot of stitches in it, and some fairly heavy swelling in that hand. Uh, we, we all hope that we will get good news from the scene of that accident on the backstretch here at the California Speedway. But, the second yellow of the day is out. Michael is in front of the field. 500, Fontana, California, California Speedway. This is the final race of the CART FedEx Championship Series, a race that certainly will decide the championship and involves a battle between Dario Franchitti and Juan Montoya. But you're looking down on the aftermath of a very serious accident, and we have no word of any kind, official or otherwise. Of course, at this point, we would only go with official. You're looking at the Forsyth team pits, where they, too, are waiting for word, and the pace car circles with the field behind them. And the accident, of course, involving Greg Moore, who started in the back of the field, moved up through the field very efficiently on the first couple of laps, and then suddenly the car jumped loose, coming off of turn two. A car nose originally kind of bounced into the air, and then the car rotated off of its right side, hitting the wall as it was totally rotating to an inverted position. It actually took the wall primarily with the, uh, with the tires and then bounced back off of the retaining wall. And we have no information whatsoever, and of course we are not going to rush that kind of information uh, if in fact it is serious. But at this moment, we know absolutely nothing except what you see there, which is two of the cart safety vehicles on the scene, as are the cart physicians. We'll be back. At the California Speedway in the 500, 15 laps being recorded in the record book, most of those coming under the uh, caution flag, the ambulance making its way back uh, to the infield area. The initial report from the scene, and remember Dr. Steve Alvey uh, on the scene, came as what uh, they refer to as a code five, which in medical terms is injuries are serious, possibly life-threatening. That is the only information that we have at this moment. And of course, the first concern is for the well-being of Greg Moore. And the last concern is forcing anyone to come up with information prematurely or 
even worse inaccurately. So we're just going to wait until we have a further update. And the doctors are always very good about giving that, not just to us, but to family and friends uh, just as quickly as they can. These are the skid marks off of turn two. One set belongs to Richie Hearn. That's the set on the left. Set on the left is Richie Hearn. Set on the right is Greg Moores. In either case, both drivers reacted to the back of the car stepping out by going to full throttle, which has become common practice this, these days. You're trying to rotate the car all the way around and keep it on the racing surface. Unfortunately for both Richie and Greg, the car got to 90 degrees, hooked up, and shot across the grass. We've seen two other incidents in this portion of the racetrack earlier this weekend. What could it be? It could be as simple as a slight breeze coming down that straightaway, so as they come onto the back straightaway, it pins the nose. It could be that they're on full tanks with low tire pressures. There's a small bump there. The car could bottom and turn the car around. It could just be cold tires and too much throttle coming off. These cars are so sensitive and so on the edge with this reduced downforce package. It could be a number of different things. Now maybe we can get more information now. Jan Bikas is with Richie Hearn, who was in the earlier incident. Yes, and of course, that was on the same place of the racetrack. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Greg Moore had a big crash in the same place. Is there something on the racetrack that may have caused it? I don't think so. I mean, for me, it was just purely a turbulence uh, issue. I, I got a really good run coming off of turn two, and, you know, I pulled down low, and, you know, there's about three or four guys, you know, about three wide in front of me, and it just gets really unpredictable and just lost the rear end slightly, and then that was it all she rode. You know, you're on a knife edge out there, so it's... Uh, yeah, I saw. I didn't know, know what happened to Greg, and uh, I mean, it could be the same thing because it's pretty busy in the back. You okay otherwise? I'm okay. I'm okay. I slowed the car down quite a bit. And I hit pretty pretty square, but um, um, you know, um, you know, it's just a bad day for the Budweiser team. All right, we look forward to seeing you back next year, and hopefully that Toyota is looking good. It'll look good in the year 2000. Thank you. Yeah, it looked good today. It's looking good right now, but uh, you know, hopefully next year will be even better. Thanks, Richie. All right, thank you. Well, that's good news there. There is. Uh, what is left of the forward section, the tub of Greg Moore's car as they try to get it back to the transporters. And as yet, we continue to wait for any update information on the condition of Greg Moore. And we are still under a full course caution. We're gonna show you the summary of the full field at this point with Michael Andretti in front. But Parker, what about turbulence as an issue? Well, as Richie said, these cars are right on a knife edge. Just a few years ago, these cars produced 4,000 pounds of downforce at 230 miles an hour. Today, they produce exactly half of that at 2,000 pounds. So how did they get the speeds back up? Well, continued engine development and tire development. They are producing very little downforce compared to the past. But if you get behind a line of cars and the car is perfectly balanced, you come out to the edge of the road just like Richie did or Greg did and try to hold the car down, these cars may look sleek, but they produce a huge amount of turbulence with the open wheels. And that's all it takes to take the remaining downforce off the car and create an accident as we've seen twice today. Still quite a bit of cleanup to do here as we wait for the restart of this race. 19 laps are complete. We also wait for more information on the condition of driver Greg Moore. It's back for an update now from the medical center. Here's Gary Jerk. Dr. Steve Olvey, who heads up the safety team, is here. What can you tell us, doctor, about Greg? Uh, Greg has severe head and internal injuries. He's being sent to Loma Linda uh, Hospital for further resuscitative efforts. Dr. Jeff Grange, who's the chief emergency doctor here uh, in this area, is with him in the helicopter and is going to report back to me soon. This is a life-threatening situation? Yes, it is. Thank you. Well, we'd hope for better news than that from Greg Moore. Our prayers go with him. We wish him well. Now we send you down trackside, Gary Gerald. Paul, we're back at the medical center. Dr. Greg Bowman from the staff here and Dr. Steve Olvey have come out uh, in an announcement for us. Dr. Olvey? Gary, I regret to announce that driver Greg Moore has been pronounced dead at Loma Linda Hospital. He died of massive head and internal injuries. Uh, he was pronounced dead at 21 minutes after 1 o'clock. Thank you very much. Well, that certainly was our concern. From Maple Ridge, Canada, Greg Moore, 24 years old, a promising, promising young rookie when he came to the series, the 95 Lights champion. His whole future ahead of him. One at Homestead this year was going to move over to drive to Roger Penske's team next year. Our condolences to his friends and family. Flag comes out for Adrian 
Fernandez. Rest of the field flashes under the white flag. Fernandez on the backside. Is the gamble about to pay off for Fernandez? Off of the final corner, Adrian Fernandez takes the win. The gamble pays off, and it's number five in his career for Adrian Fernandez. And here comes Montoya. Stay on it. Stay on it. And there he goes. You're the champion. He crosses you are the, the champion. Line just behind his rival, Frank Keedy, a chip set it. Juan Montoya, as a rookie, takes the championship. He owns the PPG Cup for the next year. Now the checkered flags fly on the entire season. Everyone being called to slow down, move to the pits. New winner, new champion. And there is your new champion, champion Colombian. Juan Pablo Montoya takes the championship. And there is Adrian Fernandez, the winner here at California. A day with tragedy, a day with elation. We'll be back. Now, very early on this season, we recognized that this young man was incredibly special and he is proving it by as a rookie taking the championship. A somewhat muted championship though because of the tragedy, the passing of driver Greg Moore injured at the start of this race. And at this moment, all the cars have been taken to their respective pit positions. There is no final ceremony, but this prayer service. We're back at the California Speedway where the prayer service continues. We'll show you the unofficial results of this race. Normally, there would be celebration and people heading for the exits. No one has moved. We ask you to do these things for us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Under Floyd, one of the chaplains with the CART missionaries, well liked, well loved, expresses the thoughts of so many here. So the race is resolved in, in Adrian Fernandez's favor and the championship to Juan Montoya. Let's go to Gary. Paul, it's so hard to describe the emotion. Thousands of people are feeling and it's uh, it's swept over all of us. Chip Ganassi and the crew have talking to Juan and remember these drivers of course have not been aware of this and they need just a moment to be able to collect their thoughts and Juan has had that opportunity and Juan I, I, I don't know how to ask you how you can enjoy such a career highlight in a moment when there's this deep sorrow and I know you just find out about it uh, can you tell us what kind of thoughts you have at this time no you know it's really bad you know it's really bad you know it's uh, happened again this year Greg was a great guy you know I'm really sorry for his family and everything you know you know you, he didn't deserve to die I know that in terms of the race and the decision was made that this race would continue and chip if you don't mind leaning in here as well you talked on the radio there was the concern about the fuel strategy, the importance of every position at the end. You realized from his urging how crucial it was to get by Mauricio Guzman at the end because that was going to decide whether or not you won this championship. Yeah, he told me about it, you know, and I thought I saw Mauricio was going really slow, so I didn't think it was going to be that hard, you know, when I went by him, I couldn't believe it. Chip, we must offer our congratulations to this team in a time of this uh, somber atmosphere. We salute you with another championship. How much of a long shot did you think it would be as this day began? I'll tell you, Gary, um, you know, we, we I, I, can't, I can't tell you. I'm just not ready for, I'm not, I'm not ready for a championship. I'm not ready for the, today's activities. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to congratulate my pal here for what a great job he did driving. 
and, and I want to certainly, uh, you know, Greg was a friend of all of ours, and I'm, I'm a little bit speechless right now, to tell you the truth. And it's an emotion that is shared all and up down Pitt Road at this time. We do have a champion for 1999, but there's been a huge price paid by another team on this day, and our thoughts and prayers are with Greg Moore and his family. Very subdued there on the scoring pylon in 26th place is the 99 car number for Greg Moore. I think you saw a good good representation of that with Chip Ganassi. You'll see it all up and down the pits because Greg was a very playful guy. In, in fact, those of us that camp from time to time in the infield of these tracks, he was always the one out running back and forth, practical joker, loved fly fishing, and this has hit everybody very very hard. Now we go to Jan. Adrian Fernandez, of course, won this race. Got out of the car with the congratulations of the team. And then, like so many of the other drivers, he heard the news and just could not keep the tears in. Adrian Fernandez, uh, along with some other drivers, are sequestered in the cart sanction office, getting away from the media, having some of their other fellow drivers come join them where they can spend some time in prayer and and as we've said Greg Moore is one and, and, and was certainly one of the most popular drivers on the circuit and it just has caught these drivers totally by surprise and of course Adrian Fernandez has declined to comment on the win today and just wants to be alone with his thoughts right now literally to the last laps and resolved with such a close finish. What's Barry, Barry Green think? Well, we'll talk with Barry. Dario, Franchitti, and Paul Tracy, of course, have gone and joined other drivers as they try to absorb this tremendous shock of losing a friend. And Barry, uh, a championship as well this day that goes down to literally the last lap of the race. And I don't know how much any of that means at this moment. Maybe you can explain what you're feeling. Well, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we lost the championship today, but, uh, you know, we also lost a, a, a great friend with, uh, in Greg Moore, you know, a great young talent and, uh, you know, a sad day for motor racing and a sad day for uh, for kart. But, uh, uh, you know, what can I say? Uh, You've got to be perfect, I think, to, to win this championship and uh, or, or almost perfect. And, uh, and you know, we just made one mistake too many today and just a little mistake in the pits and... Uh, we still finished second and third in the championship, though, and I must... Those same, the same guy or the same people that made the mistake today are the same people that got us to second and third in the championship. So, I mean, what can I... I'm, I'm, so, I'm still so proud. I'm so disappointed, and yet I'm so proud for Team Cool Green. I mean, second and third. Uh, we had two very fast cars today. Uh, just a little mistake in the pits caught us out. Harry, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your availability all season long. Thank you so much. I know it's difficult. Thanks, Harry. Marlo Klain was covering the event on Sunday, what should have been a championship coronation. Marlo, the death of any driver in competition is a nightmare, but this perhaps even more so. Greg Moore was the sports star of the future, wasn't he? He certainly was. He was one of the brightest young stars of this series. He was just 24 years old with five wins and certainly on his way to many, many more. This was his last race with Players Forsyth Racing. Next year, he was supposed to move on to Team Penske. This cart community was absolutely stunned today by Greg Moore's loss, including his good friend, Max Pappas. He's up there in the sky, and, uh, you know, we just, these uh, are our messages that God sent to us. I'm so sad. There is no, there is no word. There is nothing. There is, there is nothing that uh, no satisfaction will pay this back. But uh, we need to understand why things happen. And uh, you know, now my prayer are with Rick and, and all the Greg's family. This is a tragedy uh, for all of us. And uh, I can't express you how sad I feel. <clears throat> the win, it doesn't matter anything. 
Um, <clears throat> just a great young man and uh, had a great future ahead of him and already had achieved quite a, quite a few things in a very short period of time. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I hate this sport when it's like this. It's even uh, hard to put it in words. Like, uh, I think we're, we're out there uh, to practice a, a very nice sport and a very competitive sport, but uh, really not out there <laughs> to kill ourselves. And uh, this year we had two loss. Right now, I think it's time just to, you know, it's time just to think about our pal, and yeah, Greg, yeah. and he's at that big racetrack in the sky now, and he's, the ha he's happier than all of us, I'm sure. Wit Greg Moore was the youngest driver ever to win a kart race. Marlo, was there ever consideration given to actually canceling or stopping the race on Sunday? Well, after the race, kart chairman, CEO, Andrew Craig said that there was never a thought to cancel this race because the race was already in progress. What they did do was cancel all the post-race ceremonies for the champion and also the race winner. Can you tell us about some of the plans for services, memorials in honor of Greg? Well, on Sunday night, the Indy Lights Banquet was canceled. Instead, they were getting together in the cart community to mourn the loss of Greg Moore. And then on Monday night for the cart banquet, they're scaling back their festivities as far as crowning the champion. And instead, they will have uh, more of a memorial to Greg Moore. Marlo, it's been a very trying day. We thank you very much for all the time and hard work. Thanks, Wid. Indianapolis Star columnist Robin Miller has been covering motorsports for years. He's also a part of our RPM team, and he was there in Fontana on Sunday. He's with us now on the show. Robin, from your experience, is this the worst tragedy in Kart's history? I think hands down, but because it, I kind of liken it to Davey Allison. I mean, Greg's age, his potential, uh, the star power he had. I mean, like Jill DeFerrin said afterwards, this guy was going to be a champ many times over, and I think people were surprised he already hadn't won a championship. And it's not to take away anything from Jeff Krosnoff or Jim Hickman or Gonzalo Rodriguez, who all, all had bright futures too. But Greg Moore was, was the guy that, uh, you know, you just always expected he was either going to be in the front or leading races most of his life. Robin, did you get the chance to speak with Greg Moore after he had injured his finger before the race? In your opinion, should he have been out there with that broken finger? I saw him last night after he ran. He ran some laps at 219, and they built him a neat little brace, and I don't think that was it at all. And on the way over here, um, I was going to tell Marlo and these guys, one of the cart officials said that they thought he might have brushed the wall and a tire deflated, and that may be what caused him to spin because, you know, Hearn had spun about six laps before that in the same place, and people were thinking, well, maybe it was slippery or maybe it was his hand. I mean, it was a natural question to ask, but uh, I think he was flying. He went from 27th to 15 in three laps. Typical Greg Moore, he was going to the front. So... You know, you'd probably think something like that probably happened. Uh, you'd like to think it wasn't driver error. And I don't think he'd have done it just to go out and run if he didn't feel comfortable. As far as the race itself is concerned, do you think that card officials or speedway officials should have stopped the event? No, I really don't. I mean, I remember going to my first Indy 564 when um, Donald and Sachs were killed. And, you know, everybody knew it was bad. And they went ahead and restarted the cars. I mean... I think most of the people, most of the 90,000 people here didn't even know there was an accident. I, they didn't show a replay, I don't believe, and, and they knew that a man was injured. But uh, I think, the, you know, the show must go on. I think Rick Moore had the same mental set. Most guys do. In, in racing, I know it sounds callous, but when racing starts and somebody's hurt or there's an accident or something, guys want to clean up the wreckage and go on, and people say, you know, that's barbaric. How can they do it? It's just the way racing is. It's the way it's always been. It's probably the way it's always going to be. In a very cruel twist, last year, Greg Moore won in Michigan, the sister track to Fontana, at the very same event where the fans were killed by debris from an accident. Briefly, can you recall how he reacted to that tragedy? He said uh, what most drivers feel. He said it's, the drivers are at risk here, and, and we almost accept the challenge and the risk that you know, we could lose our life here. Fans shouldn't be killed. They shouldn't come to a race and, and, and be in harm's way. And I think he kind of spoke for the you know, whole racing community. You, know, you don't ever want to see anybody in the stands injured because of an accident and of course like Max Pappas said tonight he said you know this isn't what this is about death and, and and Greg had the attitude I think everybody else shared. Robin Miller and Fontana thank you very much for your time. Among those covering the race on Sunday for ESPN was Jan Bikas who joins us now on RPM tonight. Jan we had a chance earlier in this show to listen to some of the interview you did with Greg Moore on Saturday where you asked him about that broken finger 
And strangely enough, you suffered a very similar injury, you told him, and you said you did not drive with it. You told Greg Moore that you thought it was optimistic for him to be driving the car with that cast on his hand on Sunday. In your opinion, should he have been racing on Sunday? Yeah, I really think so, Whit. I don't think that that was the cause of the problem. In fact, there was a radio communication to Greg Moore's pit just prior to that because it was when we went back to green. Under the caution, he said, Greg, how is your hand? He says, you know, funny enough, I don't feel any pain at all. I think it's the adrenaline. Now, my situation was different. It was in a cast already. They chose for Greg Moore to put a special brace on it so he could drive. I would doubt that had any influence on the crash itself. Yeah, and this was the last race of the season for Cart, but also for Greg Moore, it was the last race with his current team. He was moving on to the Penske effort next season. What possibly do you think Greg Moore could have proven by going out there and driving in his condition? Well, you know, that's the questions that we ask now, but Greg Moore is the guy that that's just his personality. He's going to go out and always give it his best. I think in the interview he even said, you know, sometimes young guys do crazy and stupid things, but that's what Greg lived for. I mean, racing, if you look at it, is a crazy and stupid thing. A and Greg wanted to go out, would not want to be a guy who was sitting here on the sidelines if he thought there was any remote chance that he could drive. It was his personality. He gave it his all, and he did, a did that again today. What was some of the reaction of the cart community to the news there on Sunday in Fontana? Uh, it, it was just tough. What I, I don't even know how to describe it because so many of the crew members and especially the drivers did not know until the conclusion of the race. I mean, Adrian Fernandez is a picture example. He comes in, he gets all the congratulations, and then someone tells him what has happened. And, and just the, the tears just flowed from him as it did from so many people up and down pit road because Greg was so talented but he was also very, very popular here in the cart community. And indeed, it is a very tight family. Jan, thank you very much for joining us on what I know was a very difficult day for everybody. You're welcome, Whit. Paul Page and Parker Johnstone had the call from upstairs for the race on ESPN on Sunday, and they, like Jan, had the very difficult job of carrying on in the face of the horrible news. And afterwards, they offered their perspective on the tragedy in Fontana. Well, a terrible sense of sadness hung over California Speedway at the end of the race. The accident itself was one of those that the minute you saw it, instinct told you it was not survivable. But then it's uh, hope beyond hope because so many times we have seen serious accident. And then that joyous moment when the driver climbs out and raises his hand with a wave. But it wasn't going to happen today. Greg Moore, in the morning, I talked with him for a few minutes. He talked about the severe injury to his right hand and showed it to me with the sutures and with a big smile says, ah, no problem, I can do it. Uh, playful guy, wonderful guy, young man who when he came to the series after winning the Lights Championship in 95, I thought absolutely was going to be one of the great champions. I had the privilege of racing with Greg for two years. Always a very tough competitor, but always fair. And the thing that I always enjoyed about him, always upbeat, very articulate, very bright. Never saw him down, just that intensity in his eyes, being one of the top competitors. Last time I played golf with him, typical Greg. Hits the ball a mile, really doesn't care where it went at the time, just as long as he hit it hard. And, and that was all about Greg Moore. He played with me at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway this year. I was there to watch the warm-up for the International Race of Champions. And... He said, with all these rumors about next year, have you heard anything about me? I said, no, no, it's, it's quiet about you. And four days later, he was announced as a driver for Team Penske next year. A terrible and sad thing. It was uh, everything that is good about this sport. Talented, committed, courageous, fit. Everything that's good, everything that symbolizes what Champ Car Racing stands for, I think was embodied in, uh, in, in Greg Moore. So it is a... A very, very profound loss indeed. He's a, uh, a young man, a great talent, as, as, as his dad said in his chat with him in the hospital. He really loved life, loved having fun. Uh, we really was looking forward to, to the race. He was, he was a competitor. He wanted to race. He really wanted to get in this race today, and uh, obviously the results have been tragic. On behalf of the team and of uh, our partners of players, uh, we would like to uh, express our sincere sympathies to uh, Greg's family. Um, he was a fine young man, a fine individual, and somebody that had become a very close family member of our team, and we will uh, miss him greatly. Greg Moore was obviously held in high regard by members of the driving fraternity. He was also a role model in his native Canada, where he was one of that nation's most promising athletes. 
From our friends at TSN, motorsports announcer Vic Router offered his thoughts on more. The shame of this, of course, is at the age of 24, we won't see the full potential of what everyone, I think, will agree was a great future for him. Certainly within Canadian racing now and the potential that we will not see, I think, I think people will, young drivers will eventually say, you know something, I would uh, very much like to emulate Greg Moore, and that may be the greatest compliment of all. Indeed, Moore started racing very early in life and was successful at every single level from go-karts eventually to Indy cars. And we will never know what Greg Moore could have been. All of us in the ESPN family extend our condolences to the family of Greg Moore. We thank you for watching. I'm Whit Watson. We'll see you back here next week.